This is a slice of mouse brain being magnified over 50 times using a laser. How does it work and how did I build it? This won't work with some puny off the shelf laser pointer. You need something with a lot more power as well as decent quality beam symmetry. I found a way to achieve this with parts we just had around the shop. For the laser part of this, I am using a red laser diode from a DVD burner. These are nice because they are bright and have excellent beam symmetry. To drive it, I'm building a simple driver circuit using the AMC7135 current regulator. The laser and the driver will be mounted in this nice laser heatsink that includes the necessary optics as well as a cooling fan. And to simplify power delivery, I'm using a small buck converter to step the voltage down from 12 volts in to the 4 volts the laser diode needs. This way the fan can be connected to the input side and I don't need two separate input power voltages. My plan for how this is going to work is the laser will sit in the front here like this with the wires coming out the back. The fan's going to be mounted to the back there and to keep everything tidy and compact the buck converter will sit on top so that way the laser diode will be wired into this and I can bring just one set of 12 volt input wires into this whole thing to drive the laser. The diode gets pressed into place and the extra leg gets snipped off to make it easier to work on. Next, the current regulator gets soldered onto the diode and then a smoothing capacitor is added. This is also nice because I can use the capacitor legs as leads to solder the input wires to. Isn't this just the cutest little driver ever? With that done, the diode gets screwed into the lens part and the whole thing slides into the heatsink. Now we can glue down the buck converter and solder on the input leads as well as the laser leads, which means we can give it a quick test and make sure the laser is working properly, which it is. Last thing to do is attach the fan leads to the power inside of the buck converter and the laser is done. For projecting the image over a nice large area, I picked up this double concave lens. This and the laser are being mounted to a piece of extruded aluminum with some 3D printed parts I made. This keeps everything aligned and parallel while still allowing for distances to be adjusted. I am using a roughly 2 foot by 2 foot piece of poster board as my projector screen and you can see as I move the lens toward and away from the laser it changes the projection size. To hold the samples in place I printed one additional part that allows use of an alligator clip to hold whatever you are looking at positioned in the beam path. I have something incredibly cool to test this out with, which is this microscope slide of cross sections of a mouse brain. Each slice on this slide is only 25 microns thick. For reference, a human hair is on average 75 microns thick. And here it is, a projected close up of a mouse brain. Now we can adjust the zoom of this by moving the slide closer or further from the laser's focal point. We can do a practical demonstration of how this works with a wasp here. When I put the wasp into the beam, you can see it's not actually magnifying the wasp, but rather the wasp's shadow. There's a dark area where the wasp is blocking the laser light. Since the beam is diverging, the shadow diverges with it, causing it to be magnified. Why use a laser though? Why not just a regular old flashlight? The answer is spatial coherence. Laser light is coherent, meaning that all of the light waves are in phase. When these light rays are focused to a point, they do so constructively, allowing for very sharp focus and a clear projected image. A flashlight does not have coherent light, and thus produces a very fuzzy shadow which you can see here. No microscope test is complete without a drop of pond water. Let's see what critters we can see. Insect wings work well too. Here's a fly wing, which is relatively clear. And a butterfly wing with the scales wiped off. If you have any ideas what else to look at with this microscope, leave them in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this build. Remember your eye protection when working with lasers. And don't try this at home.